Do you wonder how I created this fake 3D DNA animation? Stay tuned, I'll show you in this After Effects tutorial. We create one DNA piece, add it to our main comp, where we use a null object to control the settings and animate the DNA. That makes it easy to adjust the animation and settings and to reuse it as many times as you want. Hey everyone, my name is Manuel. We start with creating the first piece of the DNA strand. We create a new composition, name it DNA, 1080 by 1080 pixels, 10 seconds long. We use the pen tool and draw a horizontal line across the screen. Hold shift to make it a straight horizontal line. Let's use a solid stroke color, no fill. Let's make sure it is in the vertical center of the comp. Let's zoom in. We use the center cross of the action and title save to position it. Use the arrow keys to move it pixel by pixel. We zoom back out. Next, we right click on the path, go to keyframe assistant and add null controllers for positional points. This is new in After Effects 25.2. If you use a version before that, you need to use the create nulls from path script. This creates a null object for each path point. And we use these two nulls to attach the two endpoints to the line. With no layer selected, we double click on the ellipse tool to create the first shape. We use a solid fill color and scale it down to 50 by 50 pixels for now. We should name the shape layers. The bottom one, line. The top one, endpoint. Let's duplicate the shape and link each position property to one of the nulls position properties. Press P to open the properties and link them with the Big Web tool. We take this comp here in the project window and add it to a new comp. Let's name that one DNA strand. That's where we control the settings and animate the DNA strand. First of all, we add an object and name it controls. Then we go to effect, expression controls and add a slider control. Let's name it DNA width. The next one, horizontal distance of the DNA elements. Let's set the range from zero to 1000. The next one, animation offset. Let's set that range from zero to two. Endpoints size, that range goes from zero to 100. Line width. And finally, a color controller. We go back to expression controls and add a color controller. Name it DNA color. Awesome. Let's start with the color. We set it to white, then lock the view of this window here to keep it open when you go back into the DNA comp. We go into the fill settings of the two round shapes and link the color property to the color points. So you can link properties from one comp to another comp, of course. Next, we open the stroke settings of the line in between the two shapes and link that color property to the expression control as well. Next, the line width is the stroke width of the path we drew at the beginning. We link this property to the line width expression control. The endpoint size is the size of the two ellipse paths. We go into the ellipse path property of the two endpoints and link its size properties to the endpoints size controller. The DNA width is the length of the path, meaning the distance of the two nulls. Therefore, we only need the exposition properties of the two nulls. We separate the dimensions of the two null position properties and link both expositions to the DNA width slider control. For now, both are set to zero. The center of the comp is at 540 pixels. Let's say the most left and right position is 300 pixels left and right of that. So let's change the range to from 240 pixels to 840 pixels. Both shapes are still at the exact same position, of course. Let's invert the position for one of the shapes by adding multiplied by minus one, then we need to add the width of the comp again, plus this comp dot width. Awesome. 
Let's go back into the main comp and animate the width there in the slider property. We add a keyframe for the slider property and set it to 240 at the beginning. After one second, we set it to 840. At two seconds, back to 240. Let's quickly open the graph editor, make sure snap is activated and edit speed graph is selected. We select all points and add easy ease. Then slightly tighten the easing even more. To keep it moving, we add an expression and add the loop out expression. Awesome, we animated the content of the pre-comp in the main comp, which is much easier. We don't have to go back there all the time. Let's link the DNA comp to the null object so that we can easily position the whole DNA strand by moving the null. Then we want to automatically position each of the DNA pieces vertically. When duplicating the DNA layer, we open the position property, press P and separate the dimensions of the position property. We duplicate the DNA comp, open both position properties and link the top Y position to the bottom one. Let's open the expression and instead of the shape layer name, we link to the layer below in general, which is index plus one. Two plus one makes three, the layer below. Plus we link to the vertical distance layer because we want to add a vertical distance to the layer below. <laughs> Let's change that name quickly. Oops. Learn more about basic expressions with my free expressions cheat sheet. The link is in the description. One more thing we need to do is to delay the animation slightly. We select both layers, go to time, and enable time remapping. Make sure both properties are open, then link the top property to the bottom one, to the layer below. We replace the layer name with index plus one. We want to look at the layer below in general. We add dot, va dot value at time, click inside the parentheses and add time minus and link to the offset slider control. Then we duplicate the top DNA comp a few times and here you go. Have fun playing. Change the speed by moving the keyframes of the DNA width slider animation. On the left side, I've added a video you might like. Thanks for watching this one. See you in the next one. Bye everyone.